Most of these stories today have been submitted directly to me by listeners just like you. So, if you have a glitch you'd like to send my way, just go to asthereavendreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, thank you. I have experienced countless glitches over my lifespan, and I've always wanted to understand. I believe that in this version of reality, there are many mysteries that simply cannot be explained, and so I've stopped trying to get to the source. I have a lot of stories with no good explanations other than ghosts. The story does not involve a ghost, but a glitch. Recently, while listening to your channel, I had a flashback to this glitch that I want to share. I say flashback because it's really not a pleasant memory. This glitch repeated several times over the period of a month, and became so distressing that I moved out of the house where it was happening. I've seen a lot of spooky events in my life, but this one still gives me the chills. This happened back in the day before cell phones, in 1991. I liked to collect old rotary phones from the 1960s, which I would get at a thrift store for $2. For anyone who isn't familiar with the ring, then just go to YouTube and search old rotary phone. I actually just now listened to a video of an old phone ringing and it put me right back into this glitch. I was living alone in an old wood frame one bedroom house in Austin that had been built in the 1920s. I hate being alone at night and I especially did not like being alone in that house. I worked late shifts at the psychiatric hospital and would get home after midnight. My job was disturbing and my commute was scary too. When I would get home, I would call up friends and invite them over because the damned house was so spooky. I would lie in bed with my phone close by, just hoping for a call. Sometimes a friend or a date would visit, but most nights I was alone because I didn't have a roommate and my girlfriend lived across town. One warm late night, I heard a phone ring once from what I thought was the other room. I only had one phone connected, but this ring sounded exactly like my phone, which had a very loud and distinctive ring. I grabbed the receiver, desperate to hear a friend, but there was only a dial tone. I knew that it was not my phone that had rung, but there was no other phone in the house which was connected. Had I managed to fall asleep and then dreamed of a phone ringing? Well, now I was wide awake at three in the morning and I hated being awake at that time. I was lying in bed, and then I heard the ring again. Just one ring. It was from across the room, and I still tried to answer my phone, which was in the bed with me. No answer, only a dial tone. I was awake at this time, and I felt like the ring was coming from under the house. I had never been under the house, but I knew there was a small crawl space to get to the pipes under the floor. I didn't even know how to access the crawl space, but I went outside anyways. I thought that I was losing my mind looking around the house for a rotary phone lying in the ground. So, this is how I lose my mind. <laughs> I was looking for a 5 pound rotary phone that I thought I would find in the grass. It was too dark and I was feeling very afraid of a ghost, so I went back inside and sat with my phone. I finally calmed down and started to feel sleepy again. I comforted myself by asking what is so scary about a phone. Then I heard the ring again, and this time I was absolutely sure that it came from under the house. The ring was so loud that there was no way I could get back to sleep. The next morning I stuck my head under the house, but there were no wires or phone. There was just dirt spiders, dead insects, and a skeleton of a small mammal. Obviously, there was no phone. The next night, I was lucky to get a friend to stay over. We were up late just listening to music when the ring happened. I yelled, See? I told you that ghost phone is real. 
I was elated, but she thought that I was playing a prank, so I challenged her to find the wretched phone. She thought the whole thing was a joke, but became more and more unsettled when she could not find the phone. She started demanding that I tell her what the trick is. She had heard the phone, and it was quite loud. I promised her that this was not a joke and that I had lost a lot of sleep over it. When she realized that it was no joke, she became very serious. But she could not find a phone. I was just happy that someone else witnessed it and that I was not alone in the house. She looked through the entire house and she looked under the house. The longer that we looked for the source of the sound, the darker the mood that filled the house. I moved out of the house shortly after all of these glitches, and it was later torn down to make way for new condos. This glitch may not sound that impressive to some, but looking back on that house, I believe that I was in an alternative reality. My life changed drastically for the better after I moved out. My wife and I are pretty avid hikers and backpackers, and we like to spend a lot of our spare time out on the trails that we live near. I won't say exactly where we live, but I'll mention that we live in a very beautiful area in Colorado. We know a lot of the area pretty well because we've lived here for the entire 25 years that we've been married. We raised our son here and we got him involved in our love of nature, so now that he's out of the house and is starting a family, he's pretty much a carbon copy of me when I was his age. I know this sounds a bit pointless for a glitch, but it's absolutely relevant. With all this, what I'm trying to establish here is that we know nature. We know the trails, the woods, and we're all fairly confident in our abilities and knowledge of what goes on out here. And I've never been afraid of anything in the woods because I have that experience. That out of the way, there was one event that happened a couple of years ago that myself, my wife, my son, and his girlfriend all experienced. We decided that we wanted to make a Saturday trip out to a hiking spot that the three of us had been down multiple times. We decided that we needed to head out in the morning to get out to where we needed to, we all got our gear together and were honestly pretty hyped up to head down the trail. And because I knew that there was a small pond in one of the spots that was just beautiful. We got there, we got into the woods, and we started toward where I wanted to get to. We were having a great time, taking pictures, commenting about certain trees. My son is a bit of a botany nerd. And his girlfriend seemed like she was having a good time too. It was all the perfect trip, until it wasn't. I know that sounds weird, but here's basically how it went down. There was a trail that we needed to take to get to the pond that was off of the main path. It wasn't clearly marked, but it was obvious where it had started, because the trees were slightly cut back, and it had created what was almost an arch over where it started. I saw the area and made sure it was the right one with the GPS that we had, and I took the lead to head toward the trail. This is where things got weird. I stepped through the arch first, and as soon as I did, something felt completely off. I kept going for about five or so feet and paused to look around, and I was trying to place what I was feeling. As soon as I realized what was wrong, which was the fact that as soon as I got on this trail it went completely silent and motionless, I heard what sounded like somebody getting sick. I turned around, and I noticed that my daughter-in-law was hunched over and throwing up off the trail. My son was comforting her and my wife was staring at me like she was about to have a heart attack. Obviously, we walked over to my daughter-in-law to see if she was okay, and she mentioned that as soon as she walked onto the trail, she started feeling dizzy and like gravity had intensified. That was a pretty spot-on explanation for what I was feeling, minus the dizziness. It felt like, as soon as we stepped onto that path, the gravity intensified by two or three times. Like, it was super heavy, super still, and silent. 
and something was definitely wrong. I know a lot of people would say something like this was just our instincts, but it felt like more than that. It felt like something was telling all four of us to stay off the trail and to go somewhere else. I confirmed with my wife and my son that they felt the same way, and they both described the same feeling that I'd had. That sense of something telling us to not go this way. Something making us feel this immense pressure. Once we got away from this path, things went back to feeling normal. There was no pressure, the forest felt alive again, and my son's wife felt fine. She was confused about why she got sick because she was feeling okay the entire time. Unfortunately, we didn't really have an explanation for her, so I just mentioned that maybe something with her breakfast didn't agree with her stomach. I have no idea what all this was. Like I said, maybe it was just instincts, but if so, we all four had the same instinctual reaction to something that we've done before and a location that we've been to. I have personally had anxiety attacks in the past, and I know what they feel like, but this felt like the pressure was being exerted by something external. Either way, we never went down that path, and we've avoided that area altogether when we go hiking now, all because of that feeling we had that day. This happened about a month ago, and it made me question reality as a whole. I live in a three-story flat with my family. We rent out the third floor to an old Japanese couple, and they usually give us gifts and food every now and then. A month ago, they gave us a box of those fancy expensive chocolate sets. I remembered opening up the box, in the kitchen, and I saw that there were nine packages of chocolate inside. The colors of wrappings were white, pink, and blue. I remembered spending at least two to three minutes to pick which one I wanted to eat. For me, I always associate the designs and colors of the wrappings slash packages to the flavor of the goodies inside. So, I decided to pick the pink one because I thought the chocolate inside would taste better than the ones with the white or blue wrappings. I picked the pink one out of the box and placed it on the kitchen table. Then my mom called me from the living room to ask me to bring her a cup of tea. I did, and that was when the strangest thing happened. When I came back to the kitchen, the chocolate that I picked out from the box was white. I thought maybe I picked the wrong one, but when I opened the box, I saw that they were all white. No pinks, no blues, just whites. It was impossible because I remembered spending at least a few minutes to pick which color I wanted to eat. And FYI, I'm not colorblind either, so I have no idea how this could have happened. I freaked out, and I didn't end up eating the chocolate. I always hear people talking about Glitch in the Matrix stories, and now, it's happened to me. Hi Raven. I'm sharing my story only with you because I feel your narration style best suits what happened to me. Heads up, if I sound angry in telling my story, it's because I am. In short, quantum immortality sucks. I was in a terrible car crash in 1998, traveling the I-5 from San Diego to San Francisco. I hit something on the road that caused my car to flip and roll at 75 miles an hour. I hit a van in the process. The car eventually landed on its wheels, and I remember driving the car to the shoulder. I got out of the car and saw that the van I hit had pulled to the shoulder, and I went to see if the driver was okay. He was. The van driver was older than me. I was 28 then, and he would have well been into his 50s. But I remember him saying, You should be dead, son. This threw me off. He pointed to my car. I looked and I saw a twisted, mangled wreck yet I was completely uninjured. 
The police arrived along with an ambulance. I gave my statement and insurance information. The medics insisted I go to the hospital. I didn't want to because I felt fine. But they said that adrenaline and shock could hide injuries. So, to be safe, I went. As I suspected, I was fine. Not a single broken bone, not even a bruise. But I remember things changing almost immediately when I returned to my college dorm. I was a Marine for 10 years, and I went to college right after that. Being a Marine meant that I was broke, so I lived in a college dorm. I quickly became the big brother of the dorm, and everyone felt safe with the Marine in residence. But that's where it changed. I was well known in my dorm and was greeted by everyone. When I got back, no one talked to me. Okay, I thought. I threw it out of my mind and went about my usual routine. Within a week, I lost my scholarships and had to take out student loans, which I did not want to do, but I was so close to completing my master's program. I had several job prospects lined up when I graduated, but those prospects dried up. But this was nothing compared to what would come. I'm a gay guy, and I have a fiancé. He was my soulmate. I proposed to him on the Golden Gate Bridge. We had our lives planned out together. He was killed by a drunk driver when he went to visit his parents one weekend. He was a gifted athlete, and he was jogging. While jogging, a drunk driver took the intersection corner at over 80 miles per hour. He hit a parked car, and that parked car flew off its wheels and hit my fiancé, killing him instantly. With him gone, no job prospects and no money, I returned home and had to live with my parents. When I returned home, things only got worse. My parents now hated me for joining the Marines and for being gay. I came out to them when I was 14 back in 1984, when such things were still frowned upon, but my parents had no issues with it back then and they were supportive of me. But now, they hated it. I would get into physical fights with my parents because of it. I could not understand what was happening because I didn't have the vocabulary to express it. I do now. This is not my world. I should have died in that accident. Maybe a version of me did. I wound up in this world, and this world does not want me here. It seems as if this world knows that I don't belong here. I know people will ask, well, what's different? Most things are the same. Many of the same movies, TV shows, music, etc., but things have happened very differently for me. For example, I'll meet people who said they were friends of mine in high school. I have no idea who these people are. And when they talk about high school, I have no memories of any of it. Over time, I realized that the me here was a neat guy. The former me was pretty popular and well-liked. More interestingly, the former me had girlfriends. That's a huge difference. There are more. You see, when I was in high school, I hated it. My school was one of the most racist institutions that I have ever known. I was not part of the dominant race there and was treated like trash because of it. I had no friends from my high school because I didn't give a crap about anyone there. I didn't go to games or proms because I hated that school. But here, it was the opposite. Over time, I've had less contact with people from high school, yet I do sometimes get a message from someone from high school pop up on Facebook. I just ignore it now. Since coming to this reality, everything has been a struggle. I've had to struggle and fight for everything without much to show for it. I've tried making friends and having relationships. Things would be fine for a couple of weeks, and then I would get ghosted, never knowing why. The longest relationship I've had since coming here has been three weeks. Eventually, I gave up on that. In my previous life, I had friends, a lot of them. I would go out, get invited to parties, go on trips, etc., but here, there's nothing. 
I remember going on a date several years ago with a guy named Alex. I thought things were going well when he said, There's something wrong with you. With me? I asked. He went on to say that he could not sense a soul in me. He said that I have no aura. Here's the thing. Years later, my brother would say the same thing. And some random guy who claimed to be a psychic approached me one day out of the blue in a store and said the same thing. He said, You lost your soul somewhere, didn't you? I think it was in that car crash back in 1998. Now... Imagine what I just told you about my life happening every day for the next 24 years. Every day is a fight, a struggle to survive. Do you know what the most heartbreaking thing is? I'm not a Marine in this reality. I joined the Marines right out of high school. I served my country, and I was proud of my service. Here, there's no record that I ever joined the military. The previous me here went into retail, apparently. I would never have done that. Years of service just gone. Ten years of my life that I can't talk to anyone about because it just never happened here. My father hated me until he died, and it seems my mother will do the same. These are not my parents. Even though I've tried... I'm in my 50s and I've had no friends or relationships since I ended up here 24 years ago. I hate being in this reality, and this reality, it seems, hates me being here as well. Eventually, I would learn about quantum immortality and finally had the vocabulary and the theoretical framework to understand what happened to me. I guess it was not my time to die in that car wreck, so I ended up here. Here in a reality that hates me being here. I also hate it. It's a rough existence for me here, and I'm quite exhausted. I can't wait to die, to get some rest, and hopefully be reunited with my love again. I miss them every day. I miss my friends, I miss my family, and my entire life. My life wasn't perfect, but it was still really good. I had happiness fun, beauty, and love in my life. I had a soul there. I have none of that here. Every day is a miserable slog to the grave for me, no matter how hard I try to improve things. This reality makes sure of that. It wasn't my time to die in that car wreck. But every day here makes me really wish it was. Because quantum immortality really, really sucks. This happened a few years back, when I worked for a fairly popular pizza place. The location I worked at was a bit strange, as it had a lobby with a full buffet for lunch, but dinner? It was only takeout and delivery, because the manager had decided that we didn't get enough business for us to do table service in the evenings. I used to work the last shift, which was pretty much 4pm to 10pm, but I would typically be there until midnight helping clean up the store. Those last couple hours were, for the most part, dead. And when it came to business at the store, the nights were pretty much 99% deliveries and then 1% carryout. So after a certain point, I would help stock up supplies, do dishes, and then sit on my phone watching YouTube until we could do the closing tasks. On this night... I heard the door chime go off around 9.50, so I got up from the seat in the back and headed up to the front of the store to see if it was a customer or a driver coming in the front door for whatever reason. As I round the corner, I see a man that is very noticeable, mostly because he looks like he's the important corporate type. He's wearing a nice suit jacket with a button-up shirt, but then also wearing jeans and what look like cowboy boots. Honestly, he stood out. People around here don't really wear boots like that, because we're a fairly suburban area outside of a decently sized city. I made small talk and took his order, and he ordered two large pies, two orders of breadsticks, 
and a cinnamon dessert thing that we had, and then a few two liters of soda. It was a decently sized order, so I told him it would be about 20 or so minutes, but since he was the only customer or order at the time, it would probably be a bit less. We get the food put together, I make one of the pizzas and get the breadsticks in the first oven rack, the other cook gets everything else together and we move through it pretty quickly. Once it's all done, I put it on the counter in front of the customer and open the boxes, and he says it all looks good. I ask him if he wants help carrying it all out because it is a lot of food, and he says that he can get it all. He grabs the two boxes and the two bags with the other items and heads toward the door. I thank him and tell him to have a great night, and as soon as I hear the door chime, the other cook shouts at me that I forgot to bag the cinnamon dessert. I shout an expletive and grab the box it's in, and I immediately run to the door to get it to him. I want to mention that the time between the chime going off of him leaving the store and me grabbing that box, it was less than five seconds, and it was probably only another five to get to the door, so there was no way for this guy to have gotten all of his food in his car, gotten in the car himself, gotten the car started, and then driven out of our parking lot. But he was literally nowhere to be found. There was only one exit to our lot, but there were no cars leaving. There were no cars parked. Nothing. This guy was nowhere to be seen. I noticed that one of our drivers was off to the side having a smoke break, and I asked him if he saw a guy walk out, and described the customer. He literally said that no one had walked out of the building for a while, and he'd been outside for about 15 minutes. I knew that this was accurate, because he'd asked if we needed help with the order that we were making for the guy, and when we told him that we had it, he told us he was going to take his break. I have no idea where the hell this guy could have gone. How he could have just vanished like this. How he got out of the building and off the property that quickly. Unless he had some sort of teleportation power or something. But the poor guy never got his cinnamon roll thing that we made for him. And he never called to let us know that we forgot it. I do feel awful because it's seriously delicious. And he definitely missed out. But... The Matrix decided to move him from this existence to another one, I guess. I have no explanation for how this happened, and I've only told a couple of people about this because I know no one would believe me because I lose things all the time. This happened sometime in August of 2021. I had two Xbox controllers, a blue one and a white one, and I sit the white controller on my neatly made bed, and I climb into the bed to get comfortable. I get under the covers and notice the controller is gone. So I pat the bed down, but I'm not feeling it at all. I literally start removing the covers off of my bed and I still don't see anything. I even move the bed away from the wall to see if it fell, even though I know it didn't because I would have heard it fall on the floor, because it's a hard floor. Also, the controller had a rattle sound in it. I lived in a small dorm room at the time with my sister, and she was in her bed when this happened. So I asked her if she'd seen the controller, and she says no. I go the rest of the day without seeing it, and I'm really upset at this point, because I know this isn't normal. It should have been where I left it. I ended up buying a new controller online because I know I didn't lose the controller like I normally lose stuff. I sent the controller to my grandparents' house so I would get it on the weekend when I visited. As this was happening, my friend lost her laptop charger. And that was really weird because she usually keeps it in one spot, and her side of the room was usually neat, and she keeps it in a drawer. The charger wasn't anywhere to be seen. Me, my sister, and our friend were looking high and low for this charger, and we could not find it. Until a couple of days later when she bought a new charger. 
She then ended up finding her old charger in the drawer that she usually keeps it in. We all thought that was weird, and it made me think about the controller that I couldn't find. Now, back to the controller. I received my new controller that I bought online, and it wasn't good at all. It was super cheap, and it wouldn't connect to the Xbox at all, so I ended up asking my grandpa for a new one, and he said he would get it and it was no problem. So, the next day, I get the controller from my grandpa and it works normally. And we go back to our college on Sunday and we start to unpack our duffel bags from our trip to our grandparents' house, and my sister calls me over to look at her bag. And when I do, the white controller that went missing was in her bag. None of us put it there, and I was nearly tearing up because I was so surprised and freaked out. My sister and I were speechless. Nothing like this has ever happened before, and my sister usually keeps her duffel bag in the closet and only takes it out when she's leaving to go home, and I know that she did not put the controller in there. We have three working controllers now. I don't know why that happened, and it was super freaky. <laughs> But thank you for reading, and please do tell me if something similar has happened to you. Long-time listener, first-time submitter, mostly because the glitches I've experienced have always been minor, or just basic inconveniences. I have a few situations where things have disappeared and reappeared in random places, and I have a few things in my past where things seem to have changed from what I remember to something completely opposite. But, for the most part, I like to believe that these could just be a false memory or weird coincidences. I've always loved listening to glitch stories, but I've never been one to really take them to be absolute truths. I'm not saying that people are lying, I just want to look for that logical explanation. That said, I don't have a logical explanation for what happened to me, and because of that, I'm going to look at these with more of an open mind. This happened about two weeks ago. My boyfriend and I decided that we wanted to go for a walk around our area, and there's a walking path that actually goes around a significant portion of our small town. It's hard to explain, but it's basically like they built a walking path to encircle the entire town, but it breaks off into a number of small streets and sidewalks, so it is super convenient. We decided that we should take the path to the south and see where it took us, because we knew that in that direction there was a small park, and... We assumed that it went that way. We started walking on the path, and about 15 minutes into the walk, there was what is basically a walking tunnel that goes under a main street next to a spill creek. It was a bit later in the evening, so yeah, it was a bit creepy, but there were lights and we were already headed that way, so I wasn't going to say that we shouldn't go through it. As we got into the tunnel, I noticed that it was super quiet inside of it, which I thought was kind of weird. With it being a concrete tunnel, you would think that the sounds would be echoey and the road noise above would be amplified, but it was seriously just silent and still. The tunnel itself was probably a couple hundred feet in length, so it's not like it was huge or anything. We walked in, and after a few moments, something just felt really off. Kind of like my anxiety was hitting me in the face really hard, but there was nothing about it that I should have been scared of. I turned to tell my boyfriend that I wasn't feeling great about pressing on, and I thought that we should go ahead and head home, and before I could say anything, something else cut me off. I say something and not someone for a reason. The voice that responded did not sound human. The inflection was super robotic and monotone, almost like a, a Siri or an Alexa voice. It sounded like it was trying to be human but couldn't quite make it work. I remember exactly what it said, too. 
it said in its creepy straight tone, You should go home, Hannah. Hannah is obviously my name, and it seriously made my skin crawl, because what the hell was that? My boyfriend and I both have androids, so it wasn't Siri, and neither of us has the Alexa app on our phone. I know that we have the Google Assistant, but it makes a dinging noise whenever you set it off, and the voice didn't really sound like it was coming from our phones. It sounded like it was coming from the tunnel. There were no places where someone could have hidden a speaker, neither of us had our phones out or the sound on, and no one else was in the tunnel with us, it was just us walking. Aside from that, even if some random person was playing a prank, how would they have known to have it say that we should go home when I hadn't even gotten the words out? And how would they have known my name? I asked my boyfriend if he heard what I heard, and he said that he did, and we both decided that we needed to go ahead and go home instead of going to the park. The next time that we walked that way, I didn't get that same nervous feeling about the tunnel. It was perfectly fine. As we walked through, I looked around the tunnel for, like, a grate or a vent or something where someone could have hidden something for a prank, and there weren't any places that would work. There weren't any speakers in the walls, and there wouldn't be any reason for them to be there anyways. This was just a walking tunnel. We were lucky that there were a few lights in the ceiling as it is. I have no idea what told me I needed to leave, I have no idea why it told me I needed to leave, but I'm glad that I listened to it, I guess. Whatever it was, I want to believe that it saved me from something, and if I hadn't listened to it, something bad could have happened. So, I guess I just wanted to put this story out here as a way to show my gratitude to the Matrix. On Thursday night, I saw something unexplainable and it has greatly disturbed me. I shared this with my mom, my friend, and my fiancé, but I don't believe anyone else would really believe me, or care, so I'll share it with you guys, as I've been reading this subreddit since its inception. This was really weird. I saw it with my own two eyes, out of nowhere, and it didn't seem paranormal at all. I have had other paranormal experiences, this did not resemble them. I was not under the influence of drugs, it was just like a glitch in a video game program. I also have never heard of anything like this, so please do feel free to share if you have any ideas. I was lying in bed scrolling social media on my phone. I'll provide a sketched image of the room's arrangement and what I could see from my point of view on the bed. In the corner of the room, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw the movement of a grey object. It moved down the corner of my room, and the movement turned my head instinctually. When I turned my head, I saw something that I hesitate to describe because it didn't make sense, and I had never seen anything like it before. Think. Lovecraftian confusion and disorientation, but without the horror element. It was like a gray smudge out of the fabric of reality. It moved like an orb, weightless in the space between my bed and the wall, but it was not spherical, and was rather blob-like. It was neither entirely translucent nor entirely opaque. The center of it was an opaque light gray, while the edges of the object were a darker and more translucent gray. It seemed like what it would look like if someone took their thumb and smudged ashes onto the world. It moved quickly from the top corner of my room to the middle of the room, near me, where I locked my eyes on it before it quickly swooped around the corner and into my closet. I know that that doesn't seem crazy compared to some experiences, but... Imagine seeing something like this just appear when you least expect it, zip around your room and then disappear into your closet. I immediately froze up. It was as though my blood ran cold and I began to shiver uncontrollably. 
unable to move from my bed because I was completely frozen in shock and confused about whether I could potentially be in danger or elsewise be going crazy, having a stroke. I called my mom and broke down until she talked me into being able to get up, turn on the main lights in my room, and run out. Later, I came back to inspect the closet, and of course there was nothing in there. But this leads to some interesting questions. I've obviously been thinking a lot about this since it happened. This weird blob or smudge zipped from the top corner of my room and swung around into my closet. If the thing were not sentient, why would it go into the closet? If the thing were just some sort of extra-dimensional mass of energy, would it not go through the wall to get into my closet and not through the door? If it were a migraine aura, it shouldn't swoop around the room, but instead remain stationary in my field of vision. I have been thinking of alternative explanations. It could not have been a shadow. First, because it did not look like a shadow. It very clearly was airborne and not cast onto the wall. Second, there is one window in my room, but it opens into a concrete wall. Yeah, beautiful view. And no light ever comes in my window. This was at night, thus there couldn't have been headlights or anything casting a shadow. I have one lamp in my room that was casting light onto the opposite wall. The lamp was in my field of vision and nothing else moved to cast a shadow, to my knowledge. I also do not visually hallucinate. I've only ever seen one other unexplainable thing in my life. Hearing and sensing and feeling and smelling are another story, and it was in the woods. And I felt the same unexplainable sense of fear and shock, where you hear in your brain clearly reverberating, this cannot have happened. After the experience, it could have been shock, but I felt full of energy and could not stop shaking. Another aside, this is not carbon monoxide poisoning. We have sensors and we've lived here for a year and I haven't had anything like this happen before at this place. Anyways, I'm not used to posting things like this, so this is pretty vulnerable for me. But I absolutely encourage alternative explanations, or similar experiences if anyone would like to share, or to point me in the direction where I might learn more, because I can't stop thinking about it. I literally just experienced what I would consider to be my first glitch in the Matrix and I'm at a genuine loss for words. I've read a lot of glitch stories over the past few months, and I've been listening to podcasts on glitches and all that, but I never personally thought I would experience anything that could be considered a glitch. Of course, that all changed pretty quickly, and of course, it involved my cats, because cats can pretty much do whatever they want on every plane of existence. I was in the kitchen making dinner for myself and my son, and I had to pause to watch something which required me to turn away from the stove and go to the sink. The way the kitchen is laid out, the stove is just opposite the sink, and the sink has a large window over it that looks out into the back porch, and our back porch is covered with a door. Because the whole porch is like this, we let our cat, Prince, out onto the porch because he can go out and watch the yard, but can't actually get out. Anyways, I look out the window while I'm washing whatever it was, and I see Prince sitting on the patio table, just staring out at nothing in particular. I remember thinking that he looked incredibly regal, because the sun was setting and it was reflecting off of his shiny black fur as he watched over his territory. I finished washing the dish and go back to finishing up dinner. After a couple minutes, I head over to the living room where my son is playing Minecraft on his Xbox, and I tell him that dinner is ready. He protests it a bit because he was having fun, but he eventually gives in and says okay, and shuts it off. 
I get his plate ready and get him at the dinner table, and then turn to make my own food. As soon as I turn back to the kitchen to get my own food, I am met with the softest of meows, and a shiny black cat sitting on the counter staring at me, expecting some of our food. I was taken aback at this. This was literally impossible. The door was shut. There was no other way in. There's only the two of us living here, myself and my son. He was busy on Minecraft, and when he gets into it, it's impossible to pull him away from it. So there's no way that he let Prince in. I didn't let him in because I was making the food, and it's just the two of us. For a moment, I thought that it could have been another cat, but it was definitely Prince's shiny black fur and blue collar that was in front of the window. So, in the end, I have literally no clue how he got into the house like he did without either of us letting him in. My guess is that he smelled dinner and was like, well, time to just phase through the wall and get my food. And bam, there he was. I was just left confused but accepting of the fact that a hungry cat has the ability to do things that we humans could literally never understand. Last night, I was enjoying my last cigarette before bed while sitting on the sofa in the sunroom. It went out. I relit it with the lighter in question, cheap, pink, electric clicky kind, and it slipped out of my hand, hit the floor, and vanished into thin air. For some extra context, and probably way too much extra detail, but bear with me guys, this is bothering me, I always use a gold-plated clipper, which had a busted flint. It was late, dark, and changing flints is fiddly, so I used this plastic one that I found in my jacket pocket that I must have picked up, or stolen, from somebody. The room that I was sitting in is a gray, stark, tiled room with next to zero decoration. The lighter was obviously inches away from my face when it slipped out of my hand at sitting height. I heard it hit the floor, clatter, and skid ever so slightly before coming to a halt. I immediately bend down to pick it up, assuming that it had either stopped skidding by knocking into the tiled coffee table, that's a big, almost immovable slab totally flush to the floor, directly in front of me, or on the leg of the sofa on which I was sitting, that is raised about 15 centimeters from the floor and sits right in the middle of the room, away from any walls. It wasn't there, and it wasn't anywhere. After turning on all the lights, I moved the sofa that I was on, and even checked beneath the sofa opposite the coffee table with the torch. Despite absolutely knowing it couldn't have possibly skidded that far, after somehow phasing through the table in front of me. I even moved the bar stalls behind me and checked behind the curtain just to make absolutely sure. The bar itself is tiled into the floor with no gaps. The curtain, transparent voile with no turn-ups. I know it's not the most exciting story ever told, but this was just inexplicably irritating. There have been lots and lots of other occurrences in this house that sometimes verge on paranormal, but... This is such a small thing that I witnessed, that's bothering me more than most of the bigger things that have had happen. A pink lighter would be obvious against the gray for a start. I've checked everywhere twice and again in the daytime today, but it's gone. Vanished. Maybe it's somehow fallen through the layers of concrete and tile, into the well that was originally below this room, or maybe it's been returned to its original owner. I just don't know, and I can't get the damn lighter out of my mind. I'm just glad it wasn't my special lighter, or I'd be pissed. So my friends, that was this week's glitch in the Matrix Collection. 
a collection of stories that prove and kind of prod at the existence of our simulation, if you want to call it that. I don't even know if it's a simulation at this point. It kind of feels like we were just uh, put on a background server and left to run for all of eternity and somebody forgot to shut it off. So it's doing nothing more than racking up the bandwidth and the electric bill. So there's that. <laughs> Anyways, friends, hopefully you all enjoyed this collection of stories. I know I did, of course. Otherwise, I wouldn't be reading them, right? And yeah, if you did, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel and like glitch stories, I do them weekly, so please consider subscribing. And if you would like, please, um, you know, hit the join button to join memberships. Go to my Patreon, where you get early access to content like this. There's also the thanks button, which is kind of like a super chat. It's um, it's like a super chat for non live streams which is basically just tipping the channel, which, again, always appreciated, but never, ever expected. The other thing we do on Glitch videos is what I call the word of the week. Now, next week is a compilation. So you have two weeks to get your word of the week into this video, and we'll move on from there. Um, last week, the word was wonder, and you guys are wonderful, of course. <laughs> so many of you left comments, and thank you so very much to each and every single one of you on the screen now, and of course, several seconds before now, is the collection of all the comments that were left on that video using the word of the week. Thank you to each and every single one of you. Honestly, really appreciate it. This week, the word of the week is a bit different, and it actually is a bit different this time. This week, we're going to use the word yester, which is kind of like a prefix. A definition, belonging to the day preceding the present, next before the present, used in compounds. Or, as I put in number two, this is my interpretation of the definition, it's as a prefix meaning prior. Yesterday, yesteryear, etc. So, just leave me a sentence using yester. It can say the word yesterday, yesteryear, yesterweek, yestermonth, um, I don't, yester fortnight, I guess, I don't know. Just anything with yester as part of the sentence. Uh, it's a bit easier to just say yesterday or yesteryear. Your choice, yeah. Anyways, I hope you're all having a beautiful day, and I hope I do see you on the next video, my friends. But until that happens, please do remember you are loved, you are important, you are valid, and no one should ever tell you otherwise. And until I see you again, I hope that you sleep well. <laughs>